Hi, my name is Jonathan Green. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to design and 3D print a birdhouse using a program called Tinkercad. This video is designed for both the first-time Tinkercad user and for those who are also more experienced. If you already know a skill that this video is teaching, feel free to skip ahead. Let's get started. Tinkercad is a 3D design application used to make 3D models for 3D printing. It is a way for you to take your ideas from thoughts in your own head to models you can show others. This is the same type of software that engineers use to design planes and cars, only a little bit simpler to use and lacks some more complex tools. Tinkercad is commonly used to design and print things like phone cases, tree ornaments, toys, or even things like replacement dishwasher parts, headphone wire wraps, or business card holders. Tinkercad is web-based, meaning there's no software to download or installation required. Your models are stored online, so you can access your files and work on your creations from any computer in the world. All that is required is a computer with internet access. Okay, let's start with some basic skills. First, navigate to tinkercad.com in your web browser and click on sign in in the top right. If you're a new user, you'll need to create a username with a password, or you can use your existing social media accounts to sign in. I will use my Gmail account. Then you'll be brought to your dashboard page where you can see all of your designs. Click on create new design. And now you'll start with a fresh new design. So first, let's learn the basics. How to move around and navigate your new design. To rotate, you're going to click and hold the right click on your mouse. To pan, you're going to click and hold center click on your mouse, if you have a center click. Additionally, to rotate, you can also grab the block that represents the workspace in the top left and rotate around. If you'd like to view from the top, you can simply click on the top view or the right view or the bottom view and your view will change. For now, we're going to view the entire workspace. If you'd like to zoom in and out, you can use the scroll wheel or the plus and minus button if you don't have a mouse. And it's really important to get used to these navigation skills because we'll need to navigate and move the workspace around quite a bit while we're working with our models. Okay, you'll see this blue outline called the work plane. This is the space that we will work on. So if I were to grab a shape, such as this box, click on it, and click on somewhere on the work plane, you'll see it places it on the work plane. New shapes will always get placed on the blue work plane. Now this shape is a box, and we can control its dimensions by changing the white boxes. So we can change the dimensions to 30 by 30 millimeters by entering the number, or we can click and drag the dimension to change it as well. The white box on the top will control the height. You'll notice there are arrows. These arrows allow you to rotate the box. We will not use these arrows very often. The black boxes allow you to control a single dimension at a time, whereas the white box allows you to control two dimensions at a time. And finally, the black arrow at the top will allow you to lift the box off the work plane. And at any time, you can change 
the amount that you're lifting the box or the dimension that you're altering by entering a number. Now say we wanted to select this box. We can use the lasso tool, which is just a left click and hold and select the box in the viewable area. And now the box is selected again. If we wanted to copy and paste this box, we can either use the duplicate and repeat button here or control C, control V on the keyboard. And you can see I've made an exact replica of the box. If I want to delete a box or a shape, I simply select it and press delete. Or I can select it and press the trash can button. And of course, if I make a mistake, there's an undo button here where I can undo and redo my last few actions. Now, I mentioned earlier that objects are only placed on the work plane. But what if I want to place an object on top of this box? Well, the answer is I would have to move the work plane. So here I would select the work plane tool. And I would move the work plane on top of my box. You can see now it's above the box. Now any object I place is going to be placed on that work plane, which you can see is above the box. And then I can move my work plane back and continue to work with my shapes. So we've covered some basic skills, how to navigate the work plane, how to move the work plane, how to place basic shapes, how to resize basic shapes, how to use the lasso tool, how to copy and paste, and how to move objects onto a new work plane. Next, we're going to learn an intermediate skill called the Align Tool. The Align Tool is a precise way to align two basic shapes with each other. So what we're going to do first is we'll place a box, and we'll place another box. We'll change the color of the second box so we can tell the difference between them. And we'll also change the dimensions to be 2, very thin, by 30. We'll also make it a little bit taller. OK. The object is going to be to align this shape inside this shape. We could use the arrow keys and try and line it up this way and this way. But we may not get it right, and it may prove to be a little difficult. We never know if we're exactly in the center. So instead, what we'll do is we'll click on one shape hold shift and click on another shape. And now you see we have them both selected. What we'll do is we'll click on the align tool or press L as the keyboard shortcut. And this gives us many uh, small black circles. These black circles will help you align the two objects in the direction that the black circle lines are, are pointed. So say we want to align in this direction here. We can click on, we can mouse over uh, one of the black alignment dots to show you in a preview what the objects will look like after we click on them. So this will align about the center of both objects. Notice that the black circle is now grayed out because we can no longer select it as it's already aligned in this direction. Next, we want to align in this direction. If I were to use this black circle, I would align about the left face of the red square and the left face of the blue square. If I wanted to align about the center, I simply click on the center circle. And that's how you use the align tool. A simple way to practice using the align tool is by building a very simple house. 
Start with a box as your main floor, and you'll move the work plane to the top of the house and place a roof. Now the first thing would be to align the roof to the base of the house. So I will select both, press L for align, and make sure that I am aligned about the center in both directions. And now you can see my roof is square to the rest of my house. As a simple exercise, go and use the work plane tool and basic shapes as well as a line to build your own house. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you'd like. And remember to have fun while you're doing it. Next, we're going to learn a tool called the Group Tool. The Group Tool will help you create new basic shapes when the basic shape you need is not automatically listed. For instance, this square with a cylinder cut in the middle, as shown on the left. In order to build this part, we need to understand what two basic shapes created, a box and a cylinder. So let's start with a box. We're going to change the dimensions for this demonstration to 30 by 30. And now let's start with a cylinder. Now, instead of this cylinder being a solid, we want to use it to cut a hole in a solid. So we will change the property to hole. And this can be done for any basic shape. Next, we're going to get this whole cylinder in the center of the box. We'll do so by using the Align tool. Finally, we will take the box and the whole cylinder, select them both using the Lasso tool, and we will use the Group tool, which is located up here in the toolbar. Once we click Group, the whole shape will cut a hole in the solid shape. And now you have the shape that we started with on the left. You can also undo your change by ungrouping. And then the two shapes become separate entities once again. A good way to explore the group tool is by building a very simple cup. Let's start with a cylinder and a cut cylinder. We will make the cut cylinder smaller than the solid cylinder. And we will use the align tool to align them about their centers. Once they are centrally aligned, we will select them both and click group. And we don't quite yet have a cup because it has no bottom. So what we will do is we will ungroup, we'll select the cut cylinder, and we'll use the black arrow to raise it up just two millimeters. We'll select them both and click on the group icon again. And now our cup has a center. You can take this demonstration to the next level by using the group tool to add a handle and make it a mug. All right, let's build the birdhouse. First, we'll start with the main body of the birdhouse, the main housing. We'll take a polygon, which is a multi-sided shape, and place it in the workspace. And let's change the dimensions to be quite large. We'll change it to be 140 by 140 millimeter. And we can move it into the center of the work plane while we're working. And we will change the height to be also 140 millimeter. Now, rather than working with a hexagon, which has six sides, 
let's work with a pentagon which has five sides. So I will take the sides slider in the properties of the shape and change it to five. Alternatively, you can also click on the number of sides and change it to five. Now we have a solid housing, but no place for the birds to enter just yet as it's still 100% solid. So what we'll do is we'll shell it out using the group tool. We'll create a copy and paste of the housing. And we are going to cut this part of the housing. Rather than cutting the same exact dimensions out of the solid, which will leave us with nothing, we're going to cut a slightly smaller version. So what we'll do is we'll select one of the dimension sliders, hold in shift, which will help to change all of the dimensions proportionally, and we'll bring it in just a few millimeters. Now, we'll select the cut, hold in shift, select the solid, and use the align tool to bring the cut in the center in all directions of the solid. Now you can't see it right now, but there is a cut that's inside this pentagon right now. And it'll become more obvious once we create an opening for the birds to enter. Next, I'll use the lasso tool to select both the cut and the solid. And you'll see shapes, two of them are highlighted. And I will group them. Now I can be certain that this housing is open inside. OK, next, let's create a circular opening for the birds to enter. First, I'm going to move my work plane to the top of the housing. And I'm going to grab a cut cylinder. And I'm going to change the dimensions to 80 by 80 to make a very large opening for the birds to enter. Next, I'll select both the housing and the cut. And let's align them so that the opening is in the center of the housing. And I'm going to drop this opening down just a bit so I actually cut into the housing of the bird house. Now I'll select everything and I'll group them together. And once I move the workspace, the work plane, you'll be able to see that the inside of the birdhouse is hollow. This is because of the cut that we did earlier. Great, so now we have a housing and an opening. The only thing that's missing is the perch. So I'll move my work, work plane back here to the top. I will grab a cylinder. And I'm going to change the dimensions to be a little bit smaller, 15 by 15 by 40. And again, I'll select the main housing of the bird house and the peg and use my align tool to align it about the center in this direction only. Now, I'll move the work plane so I can see a little better. I want to group the peg with the rest of the birdhouse. So I will select them both using the lasso tool, and then finally group. And I can now rotate the birdhouse so that it makes a little bit more sense visually. And we have created our very own birdhouse. In order to print this at your local library or on your own 3D printer, what you'll need to do is you'll need to click on the export button here. And your options are to download or to send directly to a 3D printer if you have connected to your computer. If you don't have a 3D printer connected to your computer, it's not a problem. What you'll need to do is you'll need to print the dot, you'll need to save, excuse me, the dot STL file. 
and once you select .stl, your file will start to download. You'll see the file is named the default name that each file is given. And if you'd like to change that name, you simply click on the name and begin to type. Then you can go to export and export your .stl file directly for 3D printing. That's it. Thank you very much for watching the video. Good luck in making your own designs. Thank you. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and happy creating.